As mentioned, I'm Sneha Dapre. I'm a pharmacologist in the Office of Research and Standards as a part of the Office of Genetic Drugs at the FDA. And this presentation will cover the work that is a collaborative effort between the FDA, University of Florida, Five Consulting. The topic of this presentation is effects of realistic in vitro test factors on the aerosol properties of metered dose inhalers. Okay, so just a quick disclaimer here, this presentation reflects the views of the author and should not be construed to represent FDA's views or policies. Okay, so the goal of this uh, GADUFA, so Generic Drug User Fee Amendments funded research uh, is to understand how the aerodynamic particle size distribution obtained through cascade impactor based measurements and the droplet size distribution obtained through laser diffraction based measurements of an MDI's emitted aerosol may change after passage through a realistic in vitro uh, mouth throat model setup. So we conducted a systematic analysis uh, of the effects of the following factors on APSD of three commercial MDIs uh, using a reduced factorial design. So we looked at uh, the factors we looked at included uh, realistic mouth throat models. Uh, in total, we studied 10 mouth throat models, the first one being United States pharmacopoeial induction port in metal, which is the standard commercial USB inlet and in plastic, uh, Alberta idealized throat in metal and plastic, or pharyngeal consortium models in small, medium, and large sizes, as well as Virginia Commonwealth University models in uh, sizes small, medium, and large. The plastic USB, as well as AIT models, were 3D printed in house based on the geometry of the commercial versions. We then looked at three inhalation profiles uh, representing strong, medium, and weak inhalation, as described in um, Delvadia et al. And uh, two different mouth throat model coatings were tested, uh, silicone and bridge. The insertion angles of the mouth throat into the impactor were also varied to test a version that is 25 degree uh, angle tilted with respect to the mouth throat as well as the natural insertion. Finally, two different MDI firing points were also studied, so 0.2 seconds and 0.5 seconds after the start of inhalation profiles. Okay. Um, so the APSD parameters that were assessed um, included fine particle fractions of particles uh, smaller than 5 microns, so FPF less than 5, uh, fine particle dose of particles uh, smaller than 5 microns, mass median aerodynamic diameter, or MMAD, in vitro lung dose, uh, which we defined as dose exiting the mouth throat models. Uh, we also explored correlations between the APSD parameters and the volumetric diameters, so dB50 and average transmission that were measured using <clears throat> spray tech system. Three MDI products were chosen as model uh, suspension as well as solution MDIs. So Flowvent HFA and Symbicort uh, were our model suspension MDIs and uh, Atrovent HFA was our uh, solution MDI. Uh, the figure on the right, um, it um, shows you all the mouth throat models that were <clears throat> used in this study. Okay, so looking at the overall results, um, here I'm showing FPF less than 5 micron for the three products, so Flowvent HFA, uh, Formoterol Fumarate, or Symbicord FF, and then Symbicord Budesonide, uh, and then Atrovent HFA. The mouth throat model type is specified down at the bottom. Um, so from left to right, it's USP metal, plastic, AIP metal and plastic, OPC small, medium and large, and VCU small, medium and large. So there were significant differences in the fine particle fraction less than five for all three products with different mouth throat geometries as shown here. And there were also some differences due to the other factors that we tested as can be seen from the spread of the data within each uh, of the mouth throat model type. Okay, so when we looked at the size of the, uh, sorry, so we found that there was an increasing trend uh, in the FPF uh, less than five observed with small, medium, and large mouth throat models for uh, Symbicord Formoterol Fumarate and Symbicord Biodesonide. Um, Yep, and then um, this was observed to a lesser extent uh, for Flowvent uh, and Atrovent. So when we looked at the size of the effect of each of the factors on FPF less than five, 
uh, using eta square statistic, we found that the Malthus model geometry has the strongest effect uh, followed by inhalation profile and to a smaller extent firing point. Strong IP mostly resulted in higher uh, FPF less than five for Simbicort and Atrovent, as shown in the highlighted data points here, um, showing the effect of changes in IPs and FPs only when uh, other factors are held constant. So uh, other values for eta square statistics uh, for <clears throat> some of the other um, factors that we studied can be found in the paper. So then we explored correlations between APSD parameters like fine particle fraction less than five, fine particle dose, in vitro lung dose, and MMAD uh, with the laser diffraction based measurements, so uh, DV50 and average transmission. Uh, and we found that the highest correlations were obtained for uh, only Symbicort budesonide, uh, as shown here in this uh, table, um, whereas uh, relatively low values of cor correlation coefficient were obtained for um, atrovent, fluvent, as well as Symbicort uh, uh, formotural fumarate. So no significant uh, correlations were obtained for uh, average transmission and in vitro lung dose, suggesting that the density of the aerosol plume exiting the mouth throat model is less likely to be related to the in vitro lung dose. Um, so the results of the systematic analysis suggest that when uh, conducting these realistic in vitro studies, the mouth throat model type uh, inhalation profile and to some extent firing point uh, should be considered for both solution as well as suspension meter dose inhalers and then the limited and product specific correlations between APSD derived parameters and droplet size distribution suggests that uh, laser diffraction may serve as an additional supporting characterization method rather than an alternative to cascade uh, impactor based realistic in vitro methods. So with that, I'd like to acknowledge uh, my colleagues from the FDA as well as University of Florida for their contribution to this work. And um, I'm happy to take questions um, that you may have. Thank you very much. And thanks for sharing um, your work with us and, and all the data. It's a, it's a, a really nice sort of set of data set with, with um, you know, quite a, a big matrix of, of different things that you've studied. Do you have any plans to extend this work or do, do you, have you finished the project that you're reporting here or, or is it part of an ongoing work stream? It is part of an ongoing uh, work stream that we have. So uh, in the next phase of this research, we are trying to uh, study how flows or different flow conditions affect um, the um, different commercial MDI um, aerodynamic performance. Um, so that's that's the other part of the testing. Um, and uh, interesting part of the work that we conducted before was that um, we found that for MDIs, usually uh, cas cascade impactor stages are not coated, uh, but um, uh, University of Florida colleagues found that uh, coating does make a difference and uh, they found that uh, you get better results when you're coating the stages versus not. So that's another part of the study. Um, I, I would say that's a smaller part of the study that we are trying to look at effects of coating of these stages um, for, for these MDI products. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll give you the opportunity, Michelle. <laughs> I'm going to risk it away from you. So thanks very much, Sinead. And I'd like to say um, I'm really pleased, you know, to have somebody from the FDA join us um, at this conference. I think, it, you know, it's really pleased that you're able to join. I think it's not just me. I think the fact that we've got actually got a large number of people online who really want to hear what you've got to say. So, you know, thank you very much for coming along this afternoon. Um, I guess for me, you know, what I'm really, what is sort of, exciting stroke um thought provoking is very much what you're showing is that you know really you can get such a breadth of data depending on what your um aerosolization setup is and particularly around the mouth throat um arrangement and i think you know we used to have like the standardized throat to try and prevent noise coming from this we're also here in that, you know, thinking about bioequivalence and generics and bridging from reference products into the new products. You know, there's very much a focus on having, you know, more predictive and anatomically correct setups. And so it's not a leading question, but given what you've shown here, where do you start? You know, if somebody was trying to develop a generic to these, how would they select 
the best mouth throat setup to really facilitate a bridge to a reference product. And that's not a leading question, that's from curiosity, because it's almost saying you can get such a different result based upon how you test it. How do you navigate this minefield? Right, right. Um, so I'd caveat by saying everything that um, it's, it's these are my views and <laughs> don't reflect really FDA's views or policies. But I think uh, the it depends on the uh, what you're trying to accomplish, right? So uh, if the goal is to use these realistic in vitro studies um, as a part of your alternative approach in order to waive the requirement for a clinical study then I would say that uh, it's important for us to capture the population variants. Um, so at least trying to look at different sizes of mouth throat, uh, trying to see how um, they affect the APSD, I would say, and then also flow profiles, right? Because we want to uh, use the breathing profiles that are more representative of the target population. So at least considering using different flow profiles. And as we showed here, it really depends on your product type, right? So the goal of the study was to try to kind of find a generalizable approach. So whether if I'm using a sus or developing a suspension MDI or a solution MDI, do I do really need to do different mouth or geometries? Do I really need to do different flow profiles? So the goal of the study was trying to find out uh, if we can have a generalizable approach, but uh, the results show that it really depends on the product. Um, so what we found for Symbicort wasn't applicable to what we found for uh, Flowen. So really it has to be, um, done um, individually for the product um, that you're developing. Thank you. Thanks. We've got time for one last question. So um, you've, you've done all this work for metered dose inhalers. Uh, mm -hmm. can, can you speculate about how this translates perhaps to dry powder inhalers? Right. Um, so far, our um, research experience shows that um, Maltrit model geometry is important, but I think what's more important for uh, dry powders is the flow profiles, right? Because we know that um, the deagglomeration and, and, and everything is affected by the flow profile. So that plays a, an important role in, uh, in, in determining the, the APSD uh, more, I think, than, than MDI with, with, with dry powder inhalers. Um, and with respect to other factors, I think uh, we'll have to test and see because when we started with these five factors, we really didn't know uh, how much of an effect they're going to show, but uh, it, it, we did get some interesting results. So I think um, it, it's, it's worth doing these studies in DPI to see if, if other factors are likely to affect the performance. Lovely. Thank you very much. And Thank um, you, yeah, as, as you as you develop the work and uh, and, and the additional work you referred to, it'd be, be great if you could come back and uh, and talk mm -hmm. to us again in future years. Thank you. Absolutely. I think it just Thank shows you. how much interest there is in this area. So